Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry independently show that a changing current will induce an EMF which will create an electric current in a second loop. And remember, the second loop, there's no battery, nothing, just wire and an ammeter. Their initial experiment showed that a changing current, which generated a changing magnetic field, would develop an EMF, which again is just a voltage. And once you have voltage applied to a circuit, current carrying wire, you will get a current. However, what is really changing is the magnetic flux. So here we go. Faraday's law of induction states that the induced EMF, that's over here, in a wire loop, is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through the loop. That's this delta magnetic flux over delta T, change in magnetic flux per unit time. Let's look at this equation in a little more detail. N is the number of loops or turns of wire in the coil. The more loops, the more EMF or voltage generated. Here's the key point. The change of the magnetic flux, two ways it can change here. Either the area of the loop exposed to the flux can change, and we talked about that a little bit more when we had the, uh, the loop was oriented this way, and the magnetic field went that way, there was no flux. We then turned the loop like this, we had more flux through it, and when the loop was perpendicular, we had the maximum amount of flux. In each case, the magnetic field stayed the same. So we don't really need a changing magnetic field. We can have a constant magnetic field as long as the area changes. So that's why we said earlier the flux is the important point here. Delta T, of course, is just the time interval over which the flux is changing. And the negative sign, don't worry about it so much now. We'll get to that later. But that's telling you what direction the induced EMF will be. But for now, we're just going to worry about the magnitude of the EMF. And we'll work an example problem. Here's the example problem. Find the magnitude of the induced EMF in an eight square meter one loop coil if it is perpendicular to a 0, 0.40 Tesla magnetic field that decreases to zero Tesla over a time interval of 2.0 seconds. Best way to start any problem, list the givens. So we're told that we have initial or B sub zero magnetic field of 0, 0.40 Tesla a B final of zero Tesla. Here's the time interval. Here's the cross-sectional area. And the number of loops in this coil is one. So N is equal to one. So before we get to uh, Faraday's equation, let's look at the flux. The initial flux is B zero times A. And of course, it's the component of B that's perpendicular to A, which frankly is all of B because we say it's perpendicular. So the initial flux is 3.2 Weber's. The final flux is zero because there's no magnetic field. So the change in flux is the final flux minus initial. So it's negative 3.2 Weber's. We're not going to worry about the signs yet because we're just interested in the magnitude. So we'll put absolute value here. And we have the absolute value of the induced voltage is minus N change in flux over change in time. Here's N, it's one. The flux change is negative 3.2 Weber's, and it changes in two seconds. So when we calculate, go through, do all the math, we come up with 1.6 volts. That's the EMF generated in the secondary loop. There's another way to solve these problems if, if either the magnetic field, B, or the cross-sectional area, A, is constant. We're going to do a little algebra. Here's uh, Faraday's law. E equals minus N, change in flux over change in time. And we're going to assume, like the problem we just did, that the area does not change. So we're going to take delta phi, which is the final flux minus the initial. We're going to substitute in B final times A final minus B initial times A initial. But the area doesn't change. So A final equals A initial, A zero. So we're just going to replace A0 and AF with the letter A. So we put that in here, and you'll notice we have A here, A here. We can factor it out. We bring it over here to the left. I now have BF minus B0. Well, that's just the change in magnetic field. So we have this alternate expression here for Faraday's law, where it's just minus N times A 
times the change in magnetic field over the time, the change in time. Let's take the case where the magnetic field stays the same, but the cross-sectional area of the loop is changing. Start again with Faraday's law and de the uh, definition of delta phi b, which is just flux final minus flux initial, substitute again bf times a, b0 times a0. Now in this case, the area is changing, but the magnetic field is the same. So we're going to replace bf and b0 just with b. We put it into the equation. We can factor out the b. And then we will have minus nb times the change in area. And we're left with this version of Faraday, which is minus nb delta a over delta t. And actually, this 0 doesn't belong here. We should have substituted that out. 